Most of us have heard about the Galapagos Islands and know how they were a unique laboratory for learning about the theory of natural selection. In this chapter or video, we show how one set of scientists went about preparing for their experiment on the Galapagos Islands. The first thing to realize is that the Galapagos Islands are located on the equator and are about 600 miles off the west coast of Ecuador. The Galapagos Islands are made up of a bunch of islands and they cover almost 150 miles in each direction. They are volcanic in origin and are relatively new, geologically speaking. Only a couple of the islands are inhabited. Most are volcanic deserts. One research team is going to spend a week in the desolate volcanic island of Fernandina. It took almost two days by fishing boat to arrive at the camp site, Cabo Hammond, in Fernandina. Everything these scientists would need had to be planned, accumulated, and carried on this small boat to their destination. They had to wait for low tide, and then they made several trips ashore carrying the equipment in this small dinghy. Oh, here's a cormorant welcoming us. You'll note that the young man is sculling the dinghy using a single oar to maneuver it. This was typical in the Galapagos Islands in the 1970s when I took this footage. The locals grow up on the ocean and are very familiar with all its aspects. The landing site at Cabo Hammond is sort of a breakwater of volcanic rocks and boulders. Because there's no fresh water on the island, all the water for drinking is brought in to the island for the week's trip. Oh, there's a penguin over there greeting us. And we're on the equator. And there's another cormorant. This one is drying after a bout of fishing. These dinghies can carry lots of cargo. They are pulled behind the fishing boats or pulled on board when they're going from location to location. Now that this load is ashore, the dinghy can head back out to the fishing boat and get another load to bring ashore. The jerry cans of water are carried back away from the ocean. As the tide comes in, we don't want to lose any of our valuable water to the ocean. And look who's here to welcome us, marine iguanas. Back at the fishing boat, more of the week's gear is being loaded into the dinghy. Finally, Inca gets to ride the dinghy to the island. Here, her husband Fritz pulls the dinghy into the rocks. The first thing Fritz does with this batch of bananas is to dip them into the ocean water. This is in order to prevent fire ants from being transported from the other islands onto Fernandina. Next to come ashore are the poles that are used to erect the shade in the campsite. Once everything is ashore, the arduous task of carrying this equipment from the rocky landing site to the location of the campsite begins. 
you have to watch your step as you travel over this rocky terrain. A Galapagos hawk flew down, curious as to who these newcomers were. The Galapagos hawk has no real enemies on the island and has learned no fear of a man. As I said before, all the equipment had to be moved from the landing site on the rocks to the campsite. It's a task for young and eager scientists. You don't want to slip or have some sort of accident here. There's no way of communicating back to civilization. There's no, there were no cell phones then. And the boat that will pick you up to take you home isn't scheduled here for another week. Safety was of prime concern. And these lava-formed rocks were unforgiving. You can see that the equipment was being carried from the landing site over the rocky breakwater, then over a sandy field, and finally to higher ground. You have to really want to be here to go through all this torture. We were worn out by the time we finally got the campsite set up, but there was still more because it was important to move everything to the campsite. Fishermen have been known to come ashore and steal scientists' water and other equipment that they've left at the landing site. Here we see the general terrain, the sea on the left, the jumble of volcanic rock that the fur seals live in, and then the sandy beach. In the background are the remnants of a volcano. This rocky terrain is where Dr. Trilmick will spend most of his time observing the Galapagos fur seal. And the ocean's influence was always there. I remember seeing only two or three kinds of cactus where we camped. This one kind of looked like the spines on a porcupine. I was more familiar with this type. So this was our home for the next seven days. I've uploaded other videos that show the actual scientific studies in progress. To see these, enter the words Cabo Hammond in your YouTube browser.